I feel you girl, I've been there. Google and Pinterest can be a never ending rabbit hole when it comes to wedding planning. You always feel like you're missing something. Well, in this video, I am fired up to talk to you about 20 commonly missed wedding budget items. That way you can feel confident that you're ready for your big day. And to be honest, so you avoid really overspending because these 20 items are huge. Now, if you haven't already gone and watched my video about wedding budget allocations, you need to go watch that one first. That'll introduce you to all the different main categories that you need to have for your wedding budget. You can go check that one out in the card right above. But in this video, we are going over everything, like everything that you are likely going to miss out. Now, I don't expect that you're actually going to be spending on all of these different items we're going over in this video, but really be aware that most of these you're going to encounter and not be prepared for. So, are you ready to finalize your wedding budget? Well, before anything else, I'm Scarlett, and I am so excited that you are here to learn about saving money for your wedding. I help everyday women like you with both money and investing problems with down-to-earth guidance. Honestly, it's like going and just sitting down with your friend over a cup of coffee. Okay, let's dive in with all the big ticket items that you really cannot miss out on budgeting for your wedding. One of the very first ones that I had experienced and that I experienced with helping other people with their weddings is specialty undergarments. What does specialty undergarments mean? Well, that can be boob tape, as I like to call it. That can be different shapers, a specific bra for your wedding dress. These can really, really add up. Most of these alone are anywhere from 20 to even $80, and you just really don't wanna miss out this on your budget. The second item that is commonly missed out on are your shoes. Now, you may think, okay, well, I'm not gonna forget about my shoes, but most of the time, women are so obsessed with figuring out the dress the veil, all the things, and then they forget about the shoes. The shoes can range anywhere from being cutesy sandals to being like full on heels. And so do watch out because this again can be quite an expenditure, $100 or so for a pair that you really want to make sure you're prepared for. The third item that you don't wanna miss out on are your makeup and hair trials. So I had experienced that when I got my hair and makeup trialed, it was around $60 just for the trial itself. The next item you need to be budgeting for is wedding signage. Now this varies. This could be signage over by your food. This could be a welcome sign. I've seen a lot of really neat wooden or acrylic boards that people have for their wedding, but do just recognize this is an expenditure that people kind of explore at the end of wedding planning and you can really add up your costs. One of the next ones that I really never see, but just blew me away in regard to the cost was stamps. You're going to need to send save the dates, if you choose, wedding invitations, you're going to need thank you cards, and especially if you're inviting over 200 people, that is a ton of money in stamps. Stamps can really be expensive, so make sure that this is part of your budget. Our next commonly missed wedding budget item is the hotel room. So a lot of wedding parties get ready in a hotel room, or you may plan on having a hotel room for your wedding night. This could also be just hotel rooms for out of town guests. These, again, can add up, so really watch out if you're going to be trying to do this and offering different hotel rooms. Now the next one is a wedding planner. A lot of people in cities, I find, have wedding planners. I didn't personally have one, but I do know a few friends who did. And this is something where, surprisingly, isn't part of many people's budgets. So really, really be aware of how much it can cost to have a wedding planner and put that into your budget if it is something that you plan on having. Our next budgeting item are all the snacks or the cocktail hour food. So this can range from hors d'oeuvres to just some snacks, um, in little punch bowls. This could range hugely, but this again, it can really add up depending on how many guests you have and what you plan on serving, whether it's things out of packages or things that need to be specifically served. Our next budgeting item you don't wanna miss out on are all the souvenirs and activities that you wanna experience on your honeymoon. Now I know this one isn't specifically for the wedding day, but this is something where I always advocate your honeymoon be part of your wedding budget. And so this can be something as simple as you know you are not spending more than $200 on souvenirs because trust me, 
it can get really expensive really fast. So the next one is wedding dress cleaning and preservation. This again is another one people forget and so it's part of this list because it can cost a lot for your wedding dress to be professionally cleaned and of course professionally preserved. I have seen wedding dresses be put in these really amazing preservation boxes and there are different options out there but it can really add up. The next one goes along with this and is wedding flower preservation. So if you plan on having real flowers there are a lot of really cute ways to preserve your wedding flowers and have it as like a cute keepsake but do know that this can be hundreds of dollars and so it's important for it to be part of your wedding budget. Hey real quick if you are liking this video be sure to go smash that like button and to subscribe for more awesome budgeting tips. Now let's get back to the video. Let's continue on with a few more wedding budgeting items that people just tend to forget and really overspend on their wedding. So our next budgeting item is the hairstylist. Now I know a lot of you may be like well I'm planning on getting my hair done of course but it's really important to watch out who you get it from and to make sure that you're aware of your trials because our next point here is the hairstylist. There are a lot of things that can make it more expensive. Hair pieces, veils, you're talking your hair trials which we mentioned earlier but we're also talking about the person itself. This can range a lot. Another budgeting item is all the glassware, silverware, and corkage fees that you might experience with food. Depending on your food, depending on your caterer, your venue, you may have different expenses that can really, really increase the price. So glassware, is everything actually covered? What do you actually need to bring in yourself? That's important to ask the caterer, the venue, and anyone who's providing food. Napkins, okay, we're talking forks and knives, all those things, do you have them or do you need to pay for them? And what about corkage fees? If you are providing your own alcohol, are you going to be charged a corkage fee for serving that alcohol? Very important to be looking into. The next expense is all of your tips for your vendors. So this is again very important because a lot of people tip up to 20% for all the vendors that come. So this could be servers, limo drivers, this could be the DJ. I mean everyone who's a potential vendor could be getting a tip. Our next item is transportation to and from the wedding. Who's transporting your bridal party? Who's transporting you and your spouse? And if you're going to have any specific type of transportation. Are you going to have a unique cool antique car or are you going to be having a limo? If it's neither it's just your car are you paying for gas lots of things to consider our next budgeting item is your marriage license itself so with marriage license name changes there's a lot of things that go into this so really look into what your state costs are for your marriage license and really be aware of what your costs are if you need to pay into changing your driver's license changing your name in other systems so really make sure that you have a line on your budget for those items so our next item is all the thank you gifts that you may be giving thank you gifts for your groomsmen thank you gifts for your bridesmaids for your mom for your dad for your spouse thank you gifts for your flower girls or your ring bears and it is so important to recognize that this can add up so quickly depending on what you give them and so make sure that at least there's a line on your budget for these things another one to be really aware of are all the prints and media that you're going to be having with your wedding what about all the prints afterwards it's really common that people end up getting photos framed and getting photo albums that stuff is really expensive photo albums alone could be definitely a hundred to three hundred dollars itself so make sure that if you want those different specialty items to put some money aside so that you can cherish those memories forever but not have to go into debt for it our next forgotten item are all the wedding programs and thank you cards so this goes along with our stationery, invitations stamps and whatnot but it's really important to recognize that some people have wedding programs some people have specialty thank you cards there are lots of different stationary items that can be included with weddings and so do make sure that what you see on Pinterest is not what you absolutely need, but be aware that stationery can get really pricey really fast. The last commonly forgotten item for your wedding budget that we're talking about in this video is all the wedding day food. Now, you may be thinking, well, I already have the food figured out, I'm gonna have it catered, but this is different. If you're having a wedding day where everyone's gonna be with you from 7 a.m. to like 10 p.m. on that day, you probably need to feed them for breakfast and lunch. And this could include the entire bridal party, a lot of the family, I mean, we're talking a lot. I've seen people just do sandwiches or some catered in food, whatever it is, again, this can add up. So just really be cognizant and aware of what you're going to be feeding people if you expect them to bring food themselves, if you're gonna go out and get some food during the day, whatever it is, 
be aware and put some money aside. Now I recognize a lot of these items are ones you really haven't even considered yet. But the thing is, I was able to have a wedding for under $5,000, which honestly is kind of crazy nowadays. And I included pretty much everything in this list. I recognize you really may not have a lot of money to spend, or you may have a low dollar amount that you've budgeted for your wedding. So that is why I put together a really extensive video that goes over everything you need to know about how I budgeted and allocated for $5,000 wedding. It was really awesome, so be sure to go check out that video right now.